Okay. Greetings, Dr. Yatros. Hey there, Rich. How you doing? I'm doing well tonight. Thank you. Just ate dinner, so if I uh, if you don't ask me a question every now and then, I might doze off a little bit. But uh, <laughs> no, actually, I'm I'm pretty excited to talk about this. You know, we're uh, that the world is changing, isn't it? I mean, we, we're, we're living in a different world and, um, you know, d dental sleep medicine is changing. We were just talking about the home sleep testing the other day and how, you know, we just don't, we don't do this the same way that we did, uh, certainly not the way we started 20 years ago. And, and uh, man, it's, it seems like it's changing at a faster pace, doesn't it? Yeah, I think we're going to talk about here when we get started, everyone, in about a little bit less than two minutes here about there's some really big changes going on I mean, right now. Uh, and uh, Rich and I have been doing this for 20 years. And I think the changes that are going on right now are as big or bigger than any change for dental sleep. And that's part of what we're going to talk about today. And it, it revolves around telemedicine and uh, a little bit to do with t uh, testing and how, how this is all coming to, to a system now that I think we can more readily adapt in a traditional dental office with, with less, less effort. So it's really exciting. So I'm looking over here to my right. I see we're, I've got another computer over here. It looks like we're up and broadcasting. So uh, today, a little housekeeping. Uh, if you have questions, type them into the question box. I think there might also be a chat box. Uh, we will not be answering those, but the Q&A is where you want to type your questions. Rich and I will stay on and answer all your questions verbally. We have a team of our DS3 member support experts that are on and they'll be answering some of them as we go. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to all your questions for it's over. So we really appreciate you uh, putting them in and we'll get going with this. I, I have eight o'clock here, Rich. What, what do you sound like? Eight o'clock here in Florida anyway. I say, I, let's I get seven started. o'clock in, in Texas. So we're, we're, we're on time, man. So like Guy said, we've been doing this a long time. Uh, you know, it was certainly different when we started doing this 20 years ago. And I'm in San Antonio, Texas. And, uh, you know, I have a couple of offices and this is all I do uh, when I'm not helping DS3 members is, uh, you know, make dental devices. So uh, we, Guy and I, one of our favorite sayings is, you know, ask me how I know, because we, we've made a lot of mistakes along the way. Don't you think that's fair to say, Guy? Yeah, we've probably learned more from what we, uh, what we learned not to do. But we've had a lot of changes over the years, and we've tried to help dentists. Uh, well, that's what we've been doing for at least a dozen years. And I think, you know, 2006, the practice parameters changed to, to where dental devices were uh, included as for mild to moderate apnea, and that was a huge change you've heard us po possibly talk about in the past. Well, I really believe the changes that are going on right now, we may be looking back and have a similar similar context in the future. We may say, well, you remember back in 2020 when the world was coming to an end with COVID? Well, there's some things that happened for dental sleep at that point that really uh, might be the turning point or was the turning point if we're looking back at this. So, uh, yeah, we can talk about what we do. Rich and I have been doing this a long time. We'll talk a little bit more about what uh, Dental Sleep Solutions and DS3 is in a bit, but I think we're going to get started and, and talk about what is telemedicine or telehealth. Those two terms are kind of used interchangeably, and really it's a, it's a system that allows healthcare professionals to evaluate their patients in remote locations using uh, technology. And, you know, it could be as simple as a phone in some situations. It can be uh, what we're doing here with webinars. And uh, some things have changed where we can utilize uh, more technology, at least in the current COVID situation, to accomplish this. And this is not, I, I would say, new. It's been around for a while. We evaluated telehealth platforms, what, Rich, two, three years ago, probably. Uh, we were all excited about it at that time. Uh, but what was the problem? No, nobody made me do it. I didn't have problems getting my patients in. Now I got problems getting my patients in, so I feel like I'm kind of forced to do it, I guess. Well, and the other thing is, is the payers didn't pay for it. And so well, that's true. You know, we, when we were looking at this, we're all excited. And then, well, the insurances won't reimburse. And it's a downhill trickle if the, if the, the consultation with the physician isn't covered and then the sleep test isn't covered. Well, then you know what? A lot of insurance companies won't cover your dental device down the road. So the, the gate kind of just got stopped. And we were excited when we first started looking at these platforms. Gosh, I bet a half dozen years ago or, or so. And then we realized due to payers and, and, and patient acceptance, 
people didn't want to do that then. And there's a lot of things that have changed now that will make this really a good part of your practice. I know most people we're talking to out there are dentists and you know, you can use this in your dental practices. I think some of the things we're going to talk about, you may, may decide to start utilizing in your dental practices, but there's a lot less that you can do dental wise than dental sleep. You're going to learn tonight that most all of the appointments, and actually we can do all of them. I'm kind of shaky on a few whether we want to do that as the standard of care, but we can really do this 100% remotely if we really choose to do so. Uh, probably can't do that yet with a root canal or a crown or a DO composite on number 20. So I think, I think we've got some advantages here in dental sleep and specifically, and that's one of the reasons I think that the opportunities are here. A telemedicine, I mean, I don't know, we threw some things on here, Rich, uh, you know, you've been using it for a little while and um, we've been really pivoting our practices or even our education towards more virtual things. Uh, what do you think the advantages are? Well, you, you've got it down there. And I, I think like anything, Guy, I think what we all need to learn to do is to just take the best of what we are given. And right now, this is what we are given, you know? So let's turn as much of this into a positive as we can. So the demographic that we treat in dental sleep medicine for the most part is 50 to 80 year olds. And they don't want to go out right now. You know, like I said, you mentioned the cost, which is probably the biggest thing. But my, my thought was, you know, we have a hard time. We're, we're still getting a lot of referrals from physicians. And, you know, people are like, well, I don't know. You know, I think I want to wait till this stuff blows over and does that. And we're like, hey, we do telemedicine consults now. We, we send you a link and we do this. And, it's, you know, we just act like we, we've done it all along. And, and people fall right into line. And. I, I don't know. I, I think part of me guy wants to think that maybe I'm more important than I really am, you know, so when you see me and I do this, you know, it, it makes a difference, but it, it's, it seems to be working out better than I had certainly thought it would. Well, just for the, yeah, absolutely. For the record, you're important to me always, Rich, just uh, <laughs> in case I haven't said that lately, uh, I've known you a long time and we've, we've done a lot of things. I think we've done a lot of great things things putting this together and I'm going to divide this out between like COVID and, and non-COVID advantages and you know obviously during the, the today's uh, world which is you know standing in a different place than we were a, long, uh, a few months ago obviously this all makes sense but the reason I am excited about this is not for the short term as we get through this crisis which we will get through and it will end and we'll eventually go back to some different form of life in the future. I'm encouraged that all the changes we're going to talk about right now, every indication is that they're going to remain going forward. And, and there's really two parts to that. One is that the, the payers, the laws, the standard of care will remain that we can continue doing it this way. And there's every indication that everyone believes that it's going to be hard to go back to say, no, no we, don't, you know, we don't pay for that anymore. And I think the other part of that is the patients are going to learn the advantages of telemedicine and they're going to want it in the future. I mean, right now the patients get in the car, drive across town, fight traffic, find a parking spot, go into your office, sit in the reception room, walk back to the room. You can do this. I know our consults themselves are half as long as they were before, not to mention all the prep work and all that. So we're saving 30 minutes every time we do a consult and the patient is too. So those efficiencies and the advantages to this, I believe are gonna live long beyond this. If, if, if it wasn't, I would still be excited, but not as excited. I'm excited because I think this is gonna be the new normal in, in a lot of ways. And I think we're training our patients that this is the way we need to, to be. And it just makes sense. Why do you wanna go through you know, let's just take our business away for a second. If I've got a sore throat and need a prescription, do I want to go sit in a reception room with a bunch of other people's sore throats with prescriptions long before COVID and wait just to get a, some amoxicillin for a sinus infection or something? It just doesn't make sense. And this is less expensive, easier for the patients, uh, more efficient for the doctors and the patients along. It should reduce cost because of all the efficiencies that are there. And now we have lots of great platforms to do this on. A lot of people are developing better and better systems because of this. So I think this is just a, a landslide of advantages that we're gonna continue to take advantage of. And that's why I'm literally more excited about this than I have been about anything uh, that's, that's changed in the dental sleep medicine world. Uh, we mentioned earlier, if you're just signing on, 
Uh, there's a Q&A box in the bottom. Type in any questions that you have in there in the Q&A, and we will promise to get to them before the night's over. We have our team answering some as we speak. So uh, we'll, we'll move on. With kind of where we were, uh, we did a, and I, I give Virtue Sleep a, a little credit here, we did a, we did a, um, a webinar with them back in the uh, in late winter, early spring, before COVID hit, really. And we were talking about this, and COVID was kind of in the background, maybe we were just starting to learn about it. But this slide we had in, in their presentation, and you know, this is where states were saying, yes, they allow it. I know they don't. Some of them have restrictions. Private parties pay differently. And all the, the, this was just this year that we were discussing this. And now all that's changed. Uh, all this is different because of uh, the things that have, uh, have changed in our, in our world. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine uh, position prior to COVID has been that, hey, if there's a situation that this makes sense and everyone uh, is educated and on the proper platforms, that this is a great way to deliver uh, uh, consultations and have intercommunication between physicians and dentists. So it's always been a good idea, but those obstacles have been there. And so why do I think this is a good idea? I want to kind of take this aside and Rich and I are going to talk about what we've been doing for over a dozen to 15 years, trying to get dentists to do dental sleep. That's, if you want to know what dental sleep solutions is, the S3 is a system for dentists to succeed in dental sleep. And we uh, have trained thousands of, of dental offices in doing this. And most of them do really well. Some of them do extremely well and some of them don't. Some of them get excited to do this and they just, you know, get bogged down and they don't move on in their dental practices. And I had to ask why they fail. And I think it comes down to this. We, we have meetings with our, our whole team. We have a whole team of member support experts that help dentists. And I had a meeting with them, Rich. I, I don't think you were on that meeting. And I said, tell me why these offices don't get to where they want to in sleep. They all want to do it. And these are the subjects that came up. You know, the, the, the offices, you know, they need more motivation. They need to put a little more time into it. They need to be a little more capable. You know, all stuff that the offices could change. And the whole purpose of the meeting when I talked to them was, yeah, that's true. And maybe offices have more time and we can make them a little more capable of our systems and we can motivate them. But what if we make this smaller? What if we make those barriers lower? And now come along with what we're gonna be talking about tonight. Uh, I believe those barriers are lower because we can do one of the two things. We can do lower the barriers or we can, we can help the, on the other side. And I think lowering those barriers uh, makes a big, uh, bigger difference across the board. So matter, no matter your capabilities, no matter your motivation, if we lower the barriers, more dental offices will be able to do this. And I think just a brief discussion about what those barriers or hurdles are will make this um, the hour we have tonight more meaningful about why this is so important, why this is so exciting to us right now. So, Rich, I don't know, you know, I know I put this together, so I end up t talking a little bit more than you do on this, but I shared this. We had a meeting with our whole DS3 member support team, and we sat down and said, you know, let's talk about what are the biggest hurdles to dental offices getting to where they want to be. Why, why do they get bogged down? And, you know, we went through all the different things, and Everyone came to an agreement that it came down to these three things. And I'll just put them up here for you. And let what me, I want to let, let me say, Guy, too, what, what Guy's talking about is he's talking about meeting with our member support experts who deal every single day with 10 to 20 different, each one of them, 10 to 20 different dental offices who are actually trying to do more dental sleep than that. So this is coming from uh, a reliable source. It's coming from some from people who, who have these conversations every single day with these dentists. Absolutely. And, and that's their job. Their job is to help the dental offices bring sleep into the practices. That's why they, you know, come in and collect a paycheck. That's why they come to work. And that's why we exist. And these were the three by, by pretty sound, say majority, the three most leading reasons why offices don't get to where they need to go. And I will say to you that if you'll listen tonight, what we're going to talk about and the opportunities right now, all three of these barriers have been lowered dramatically. How do we get our patients diagnosed? And if we get them diagnosed, how do we get all the paperwork needed 
to get paid, which is I'm putting all that, you know, kind of together, but those two go hand in hand. You've got to have, you've got to have uh, letters of medical necessity. You've got to have prescriptions. And so people get stopped right there. They have all these patients. They know they're at risk for apnea. They talk to them about getting tested and they don't have systems in place to go do that. They can't, even though it's, maybe their state doesn't allow them to order sleep tests. If it does allow them to order sleep tests, uh, they still can't get the documentation. And then the last one I think has to do with this as well because they don't have the time to do it. And I think uh, during this crisis right now, uh, as we get crisis and come back and forth, dental offices that we've talked to have been stressed, but they've seen less patients than they normally do because of COVID. So you have more time start working and implementing these systems. So I see somebody, I didn't open the chat box here, Rich. I see someone's uh, uh, typing into the, uh, into the chat box. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good, thanks for putting that in. If you have any questions, oh, by, by all means, make sure you put them into the question and answer. That's what we're gonna be answering. So any, any more comments on that, Rich? I mean, I think this is really the, the, the prime time because of the things that are going on here. No, and, and, you know, we can talk about, you know, each one of these for a couple of hours. You know, when you think about, you know, we, we always hear dentists say, well, where, where do I find patients? You know, well, they're walking through your doors every day, you know, um, but how do we get them sleep tested? You know, how do we do this? So those are the barriers that guy was talking about. So when we talk about, you know, we, we can, we can try to motivate you all we can, and some of you will succeed and some of you won't. What we're working and trying to do in, in, in the bigger picture is we're trying to get the barriers lower because when we get the barriers lower, then more people will, will, will rise up and do this because it's just not as hard to do. You know, we don't have to work as hard at it. And I think, Guy, it's fair to say that that's true for the patients as well. Yeah, good I mean, point. We, Right. We know back, you know, back in the day, we used to say, hey, guy, man, you're sleepy, you're snoring, you're tired, you need to get a sleep test. You know, I refer you to a sleep doc, and it took three months to get in and three months to get a, 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 a you know, a sleep study, and then, you know, another month to get the report, and then they, you know, you want to give you a CPAP. So I, I think this works for the patients as well. Absolutely. So I really think that we are on the verge of a big change in, in dental sleep. I mean, we know our world's changing right now. There's no doubt about that. But we can look at this negative, and there's some negative, certainly. But there's some big positive change in dental sleep. And whether you uh, uh, adjust and adapt and pivot and jump on these changes is up to you. We're going to outline to you uh, how we do that. What has changed? So what's, the, what's, the, what's COVID brought to this? Well, most notably, uh, this was when? May, March 17th, excuse me, that President Trump, due to access of care, made a, uh, a, con a congressional order to allow more telemedicine. And you can go read the, the details on it, and I'm just gonna kind of uh, paraphrase it here at, the, at a high level. Uh, essentially, beneficiaries will be able to, to receive telehealth services, basically the same as if you're in person. And Medicare and commercial insurances should reimburse providers based on uh, reimbursement rates as if they were in person to avoid the patients coming in for a face-to-face -face visit. So in other words, if I go see my doctor like we're talking right now on the internet, that's the same as walking in there. They can bill for it. The patient gets the same treatment for certain procedures. Obviously, we're not going to do an appendectomy uh, via, via this, uh, this format, but for routine procedures, uh, that's going to be allowed. And they also allowed for a wider range of communication tools. In order to do telemedicine consultations, prior to March, whatever it was, 17th there, you had to have a HIPAA compliant communication tools. Uh, and you can look at the list of them, but they opened it up to, to other more routinely available uh, communication tools that, that the patients have, FaceTime, I think is one of them, or, or you know, uh, Zoom formats and things like that. Now we haven't done that in our office, and I'll explain why, because we kind of want to set up a system, because we believe this is gonna go on forward, might as well get the system right, we're using a HIPAA compliant system. But there's uh, more opportunities uh, to do that now and um, uh, again, the, the, they should get reimbursed the same amount. And they weren't going to uh, do audits to see if, uh, you know, if, if you had a, 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 a relationship with that physician prior uh, to, to coming in, because certain insurances require that you have a referral and that you have certain uh, relationships before you get paid. So what does all that mean? It means that telemedicine is 
more or less equal for routine appointments to walking into that doctor's office. And it opened up the door, not just a little bit, but a big way towards getting physicians and you as dentists as providers in dental sleep medicine to provide dental sleep medicine for your patients uh, the same as if you were in person. So that's huge. I think that we're going to be talking again, Rich, about this in a, in a few years about how this really changed the way we do things. And again, Guy, that, that's lowering the barrier for the patient as well. You know, we have to yeah. think about, you know, the, the world revolves around me, as my wife tells me uh, every day. And, uh, <laughs> the, uh, but, and, and this is making it easier for us, but it's also making it easier for our patients, you know, and, and we, we got to keep that in mind too, because that's been part of the problem. That is still part of the problem for uh, why we've not treated more people who have sleep apnea. So it's all, all good. It's all headed in the right direction. Yeah. So we're going to talk to you specifically about how we do each of the appointments in dental sleep and how it's being enhanced by this little housekeeping. You do get CE for this. Uh, so if you have registered, you'll get it to your inbox within 48 hours. If you, uh, if you don't see it for some reason, check your jump folder. If it's not there, then by all means contact us, but you should get it. And we'll explain a little bit more what we do later on, but if you want any help in dental sleep, and then just throughout the day uh, in the uh, questions box, type consult, or you can do it in the chat if you'd rather. And just we'll, we'll get on the phone and we'll help you. Our team we will help you with any concerns you have and don't sleep. We'll show you what we're all about and we'll do that for no charge to help you. The next webinar is going to be on billing. Just want to throw that out while uh, we're doing housekeeping. It's August 18th, same time, 8 o'clock Eastern. And that's with Lisa, who's got 25 years of, uh, of medical billing. She's in charge of four-pillar billing. She, all she does is help uh, dentists get paid for doing dental sleep. So don't miss that. And we have some virtual courses coming up. I'll put these up at the end, so I'll just briefly talk about them now. But in case you have to jump off early or something, we have a, a four hours billing course that Lisa's doing. It's $249. If you just will put in early bird, you can get $100 off or you can try to copy that code and go go do the, uh, to our website. And we also have a three day, uh, six hour dental sleep medicine course that have gotten very good reviews that I've been doing uh, really from, we call it the GPS because we teach you to navigate through all the systems of dental sleep. It's $495 for three nights and you get to attend the billing webinar for free. But if you uh, do it this week and put early bird, we give $200 off just this week because it's coming up in a few weeks. And there's the dates, uh, it's seven to nine Eastern. And this, uh, it'll be not in webinar format, it's in meeting format. So you'll be able to talk back and forth with a lot of interaction with that. So just type in early bird if you want that uh, and we'll be able to get you in on that. And you actually even get a all the, the value of the course and, and just in, and a kit that you get, you get a, a MyTap, you get some uh, EMA model, you get some marketing material. And so uh, tape measures, everything you need to do to get going. All right, so let's talk about the appointments uh, at a high level and then we'll dive deeper down into them. Uh, you know, what are the appointments for dental sleep? Well, we have consultations uh, with uh, our patients sometimes before they get diagnosed. So sometimes patients call us and they're snores and we got to, uh, I know uh, Justin, my, my partner and my, my local offices on here. We're going to probably have some questions for him a little bit. I know he had a, someone today who didn't have a diagnosis and we, we, we did a, a telemedicine visit with them and then got them down the path of getting diagnosed. Uh, we also have our patients do physician consultations so that they can determine if they're at risk for apnea and order the sleep test for getting our HST diagnosis. And then we have consultations for diagnosed patients with our patients via telemedicine, that's all we're doing now. And then you can see I've got a couple of asterisks here. Uh, that we'll talk about ways you can do impressions and delivery virtually. I don't know that that's something we wanna do on a routine basis forever and ever, but we certainly uh, have abilities to do that now. And then the follow-up checks and titrations, we can do this. So look, we can do the majority and even all of the telemedicine appointments via, uh, I mean, all the appointments via telemedicine in today's world, which is really phenomenal. And, and think about what efficiencies we're starting to, to bring into our normal practice and, and again, teaching our patients that. Um, when we talk about physician consultation, this, can, this would be for a patient who uh, has not been diagnosed and we're trying to get them diagnosed. Rich, do you recall when we met 15 years ago, what our first business plan was all based around? I'm sure you do 
What, what were we trying to solve? What was the big, big problem we were trying to solve back then? How do we get people diagnosed? Yeah, because back then you had to go to a sleep lab. And uh, you know, then they'd go to sleep lab and they wouldn't go. If they did go, we'd never see them again. And the patient would come back with an AHI of 10 and say, well, they gave me a CPAP. And you know, we tried to train, train dentists to, to educate their physicians. And then HSTs came around and we tried to get uh, we, uh, a dentist to refer to their local physicians. And maybe they have a physician who just doesn't believe in, in dental devices. And you know, the buck stops there, especially if they're in a small town. And that was really the reason that all of us are on here today is we were trying to solve this problem. And I believe this is one of the biggest uh, changes that's going to make dentists get involved in dental sleep easier. So imagine now your patient comes through the door. You say, you know, you screen them with your Epworth or uh, Stop Bang or a DS3 screen or whatever you're doing, and they're at risk for apnea. Okay, what do you do? Well, in the past, like I say, you can refer them down the road. You can give them a sleep test maybe, but then you've got to get information from the physician afterwards. Uh, it, it becomes very clunky. Imagine now we say, hey, you know what, Mr. Jones, let's make you an appointment for a telemedicine visit. You're at risk for this. You're going to meet a doctor. They're going to talk to you for a few minutes, uh, determine if, uh, if they agree with that. And if they are, they're going to mail you a sleep test in the mail or you're gonna take this one home with you that we, we hand to you on the way out the door. And they're gonna bill your medical insurance directly for this and you're gonna get a diagnosis sent back to us uh, in, in, in via the, the, the web. And then I can sit down on the computer and go over those results with you. Probably costs, yeah. go ahead. I don't know, Guy, you've only taken it from six months down to 30 minutes. Do you think that's more efficient? <laughs> and this know? is, in every state too. Right. We don't have to worry about state laws. We don't have to worry that if your physician down the road just doesn't want to have anything to do with this. Um, you don't have to set up these relationships. We're working with several uh, uh, companies now that provide, and if you want to know more about that, just type in consultation and we'll walk you through the options on that. But you know, the, the, the idea here is, I mean, uh, uh, Justin, I, I will ask you to join us if you're on there. Uh, you want to talk about your experience today with that? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, just everything seemed to, to fall into place, uh, with our patient today. Um, he was motivated and, uh, you know, we, even though we didn't have a diagnosis, we were still able to, uh, get him scheduled for not only, uh, to get a diagnosis to, to receive that baseline, but we also, uh, got him to, to come in and get scheduled and, and get started with his impressions too. So. Yeah, so he knows he wants to treat this, and he knows he doesn't want the alternative treatment, which is CPAP. And so in today, in the 30-minute uh, uh, telemedicine consultation on the computer, we had a discussion with the patient, went through his options, and we're going to talk to you about how we do those in a few minutes. We've become much more efficient now because of this, too. Talk to him about, hey, you, you, know, you really need to be, have a diagnosis first, and we're going to set you up with an appointment with a, a doctor that you're going to meet on the computer, and they're going to mail you a sleep test in the mail, and then we're going to uh, get started on this uh, immediately and, and make sure we have everything in place before we deliver the device because that's what we have to do to be paid. All that we couldn't have done before COVID because it stopped at that face-to-face -face with the physician um, because the medical insurances wouldn't reimburse us for that or wouldn't reimburse the physicians, which made the whole thing stop when it comes to reimbursement for us. So this will work in anyone's offices now. Um, uh, it, 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 I see some questions coming in. We'll get to those in just a second. It'll work in uh, you know, any state because these companies we work with have physicians and all boarded in all state. So I, I, I think if you've been doing this long enough, you're going to realize how important uh, this step is to future success. Um, anything more on that, Rich, with the physician uh, telemedicine consultations that you have to add? You're muted. Unmute, unmute yourself, Rich. Thank you. The only thing uh, I will throw out, and this, this doesn't apply to uh, many of you out there, but, you know, I've built the last 20 years developing a referral network of physicians, some of whom won't necessarily like this. So if you have a physician that you work with regularly, 
my recommendation would you be you go over there you sit down take him a sandwich a cup of coffee and say hey how do we make this work here are the options how have you engaged telemedicine how have you done this you know i always i always like to ask questions guy because they don't seem as attacking you know it's, it's a little more benign and that that doesn't apply to everybody but some of you have pretty good referral sources and the only caution i would say would be to have a conversation with them about this because they they may surprise you they may say hey well what if i'm the guy that does the consult and it's like holy cow it's a win-win you know now you've got somebody else who can help you with some of this stuff so that was the only thing i wanted to add yeah i think we, one question that usually comes up is you know do we have to worry about our local physicians being upset about this and i think we always want to respect those relationships uh, but these are patients coming to us uh, if they refer them, then that's one thing. But these are patients coming right. to us, uh, usually from social media, from our website, from ads we're running, from other patient referrals, and we're just trying to get them tested. And I think I can't overemphasize this process. Once the patient does the telemedicine visit, gets the HST, all the documentation comes back you need. You have the uh, letter of medical testing if you need one of those. You have a diagnosis. So... In the past, even if we had an HST in our hand to hand someone, and if that was legal in our state to do, which it is in lots of states, we still didn't have everything we needed. To come back, we had a diagnosis, but now we had to find a primary care to write the prescription, and, and, and it, we got bogged down in this. So this process went from weeks to days, uh, and you don't have to wait to get in for most of these either. So this whole process can, can be, in a matter of two weeks, you can have your patient back diagnosed. Costs very little to the patient, depending on the service you're using and the, and the patient's insurance. And it's just, um, I, I, I'm really excited. We've been using it for well, maybe six weeks in our office and it's going really well. And I think for the dentists getting new to this who don't have relationships with physicians, it's absolutely a game changer. So now the patient comes back, I mean, and, and they've got a diagnosis or we can say the consultations are really two types. One that maybe a patient uh, hasn't had a diagnosis. We're gonna do, do it in the same format, but we just have a little bit of different verbiage that we go over. Uh, and this is something I, I think something you said earlier I wanna recommend, because when we first started trying to do this, patients would call us and it's something Rich has always said, fake it till you make it, act like you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I was talking to my team and they're like, no one really wants to do these telemedicine consults. They just say, oh, I'll just wait till, you know, the world gets back straightened out and I'll come in then. And I listened to them on the calls of what they were saying. I said, what do you, you know, how you, how are you saying this? And now due to, we're not, we're no longer doing these consults in the office. We prefer to do them. And they go in this big speech about why we're doing it differently now. And the only thing we really changed was the wording and the kind of our confidence level. We're doing this differently to, Okay, you want this, the first appointment, we do that virtually. And that's uh, done in a half hour. We go through everything to, to this and talk about your insurance coverage. Let's get that scheduled. Just like we've been doing it our whole lives that way. And it takes a difference in patients. And I think uh, once we started doing that, and most patients readily do this. Uh, are there ones that don't? Sure. We're, we live in the geriatric capital of the world down here. And so there are some patients who, who, who can't master the technology enough, even as simple as it's gotten to do this. So uh, those are my advices with, with, with on how to get it scheduled. Um, Rich, do you have any more on that? We can talk about what we do during these. I would say, Guy, let, let's go ahead and run that same confidence and that same fake it till you make it over to the treatment of dental sleep as well. You know, we, we hear, uh, we coach dentists on how to do this, and we, we hear them a lot of times start, you know, going into this long diatribe about why the patient should do this and why their dental device is the best. And, you know, you listen to me or you, and we go, hey, you got sleep apnea, man. It's killing you. Taking years off your life. You don't want to use the CPAP. Well, you know, use a dental device. You know, I mean, it's it, it, it let that carry over into other ways. You know, I would I would say is is a pretty good tip for a lot of people tonight. Absolutely. And yeah. So, can I add something there, guy? Sure. Uh, the other thing I would say about the virtual consultations and really being able to do it, uh, you know, when I first did this, it was uncomfortable. Um, it has clearly over the past six weeks gotten much more comfortable. 
Uh, but as far as you know, faking it till you make it, like you say, uh, we even have a presentation that we're showing the patient. So um, if anything that keeps us on track and, and allows us to, to hit all of our bullet points um, and really say and really think out the process of, of what we want to say and the message we want to get across to that patient. Yeah, um, is that, that was Justin, my, my partner here in our, in, our, in our three offices, the New Concept Sleep speaking. Uh, and yes, I agree with that. And uh, Justin in particular, I've watched him do consults and he does a great job. Keep, but it keeps him on track. He doesn't, he didn't get, get us off and tangent. And that, therefore we're doing them much quicker. We were scheduling them for an hour uh, and now we're, we're getting uh, these things done in, in half the time. And I mean, that's an advantage to everyone. And we're not just trying to be fast and efficient. We're trying to respect the patient's time as well. So we have kind of a system we go through in the reviewing the medical uh, in, information. And like uh, Justin said, we go through several steps with that. We have a, a PowerPoint that I don't know if you did, if you pulled up a PowerPoint when the patient was sitting in the chair, it would kind of maybe be off-putting a little bit. But with these with these consults, it goes really well. Well, let's just talk about you know what it is that that, that you want here. And we have it's not real uh, cumbersome. It's uh, six to ten slides depending on the patient. We just kind of walk through uh, what their symptoms are, and we have the little um, little slide of the tongue falling back in the mouth and little animation of that. And then we go through the patient's symptoms with them and. We have the, all the health information filled out ahead of time. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's actually in a way it's, it's more organized and it's, I would say it's no less interactive. Uh, I, I believe in some ways it's more interactive because the patient's prompted, uh, you ask them questions and they feel uh, obligated to answer more than if they're just sitting in their chairs with their, you know, with their arms and their arms crossed. So it, it's gone real well. Um, you need certain things to do this. Uh, you need a private setting, uh, no matter which platform you're doing, uh, you're not supposed to be doing this, you know, don't go set up your shop in Starbucks and start doing these consultations because they got good internet that, that would not be respecting privacy and you need high speed internet and you need some way to you know, camera and we get you some $30 headsets or something so that you can communicate well with the patients so they don't get a bunch of echoing. Uh, and then you need a platform to do this. And well, we, we've chosen one that we could discuss if you want to, uh, when you, when you talk to us about it, and, uh, we're, we're happy with it for now. Uh, it is HIPAA compliant. There are ones that are out there that we're customarily used for other things that, that, that you could use in today's world. Uh, the one we chose, I think what we liked about it too, is you could share your screen. It was just easy to set up appointments with, um, with the patients. They get an email. It was just uh, easy to use and, and, and fairly inexpensive. Uh, something else you're going to need that we had to look into is document signing platform. Uh, because the patients aren't coming in the office, you're going to need a way to get them to digitally sign their their their, their papers, and uh, of course you need some time to get all this uh, set up. So I think Richard typing in some answers there. Do you have anything more to add, you or, or Justin, on on that? No, no, that's good. You know that that's something that you don't uh, you know you you kind of overlook until you get to that point and you go. Oh, you need to sign a couple of things. Or how do we do that? You know. So again, you know, you guys, we do record these. You can uh, watch these things. You know, and uh, it's a good thing. You know, some of you are thinking, "Wow, I need to get my office manager to watch this or my staff." You know, so uh, th there's a lot of good information in here that'll help you. Yep, and so kind of here kind of shows you just a little bit. Here's screen share with with, with some uh, of our PowerPoint information and. Uh, Justin and I were doing kind of a mock one here so we didn't have to uh, knock out anybody's uh, patient information, but you can see yourself, you can see the patient, you can share the screens, and it's, it's really simple to use. And, and one of the questions comes up, can you do an exam? Well, you can see I have my ugly face there. I guess I should have leaned my head back, but you can, you can get enough information to see if their teeth are, are strong enough to at least go to the next step of having them come in for an examination. You can rule some people out. From this, so you, you can literally do do a, a semi exam on this uh, in these platforms. Very easy to do, very easy to use, and then you need a a, a form on, on how to use it. I, I will throw this name out there. We're using Jot Form now. Uh, we might change tomorrow. There's DocuSign. There's other companies out there. This one was probably a little less user friendly, but a whole lot less expensive. We we did a lot of research trying to find one that didn't cost two thousand dollars a year. So you need a, a way to upload your forms. So that they can sign them. Now we, we do have a web portal through DS3 that most patients uh, utilize, and but the ones that 
can't and some additional forms that that are, aren't traditionally in that uh, web portal we, we need them to sign like um, things things like um, uh, consents to treatment and so forth so you'll need a system to do that and here's a sample email uh, if, if once you go in and register the patient uh, it gives them just an email that a template comes out and they just have to click on this and on their phone or on their computer whatever they're they're using and it's uh, we played around with it i've been the patient i've been the doctors and uh you know of course we're doing consults as a doctor now but as a patient point of view i used it it's uh, fairly simple to do and so whatever system we're going to use make sure it's simple enough that your patients don't have a lot of uh, concerns with it. So um, we're, we're using it for literally all consultations now. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, maybe Justin can say we've gotten a few in person if they really insist, but I would say, uh, Justin, is it almost all of them we're doing that way now? Yeah, it's, it's a very big number. Um, it's easier, it's like you said, more efficient. Um, and the only ones that we do do is, you know, the patients calling us and say, Hey, I know I'm going to get started. I know I'm going to do this. I want to go ahead and come into the office. And so obviously we, uh, you know, don't say no to those patients. Right. And so during the height of this, we did deliver some devices virtually. We just had the patient. Uh, I know that some of our DS3 members drove them to their houses and handed them out the car door to them and stood back and said, all right, does it fit okay? Uh, we've talked to other DS3 members who have utilized these platforms and watched them seat their devices. And I think that will make it legal in many of your states that you're doing if you have to be there for the delivery. Uh, there is a impression kit from Glidewell and I know some of our members have used it. Uh, I don't know that I haven't personally used it. We, we, we like scanning, we still have them coming in for that appointment, but you, know, you, you could, push come the shove, do this with the self-impression kit, uh, have the patient deliver the device themselves while you're watching them if you want to. Uh, and I know, and I do know offices that uh, do it that way. Uh, we still see the patients for the scans and the deliveries typically. I think we've done some virtual deliveries, uh, but for the most part, we're seeing them for those two appointments, but then literally trying to do all other follow-up appointments with uh, either phone calls or these telemedicine consultations, which by the way, we were doing before, but the patients were more resistant to saying yes to it. And now they're embracing that. And I, I really believe going forward, this will become the standard and it's just much more efficient. We're gonna walk you through in just a few moments. Okay, question, Rich, you have anything? I'm just talking away, man. No, Sorry. no, it's, you know, again, I'm, I'm old fashioned uh, too, guy. So, you know, I'm right there with the rest of you guys in this, you know, I'm scratching my head a little bit and we've, we've been doing it for a couple of weeks now and, you know, it's going well, Justin has probably done more of these than a lot of people in the country, but there, you know, we have a lot of DS3 members who are doing more and more of it. So I, I think it's something that, you know, we all need to be open to, and we need to be willing uh, to try and and do it. I I get it. If you're sitting there, you know, scratching your head, going, "Man, I don't know about this," I, I'm with you because I'm the same way. And uh, you know, we we've only done a couple of dozen, but it, it is going very well, and it is making us more efficient. It is keeping us more on track. Um, and again, take what we're given and try to make the most and the best of it. And I think that's what we're doing. But like you said earlier, Guy, you know, a lot of this isn't particularly going away. You know, once, once patients realize they don't have to drive across town, I mean, you know, who's, who's the worst patient? You know, it's the one that, you know, you, you, is, is mean and grumpy to start with. And then they got to fight traffic going across town. And by the time they get to your office, they're ready to fight somebody, you know, when they walk in the door. And you can avoid a lot of that kind of stuff. And you can avoid them being in the, the reception room with your nice patients that you don't want them to be around. I mean, we had yeah. patients, we've had, you've all had patients like that. Oh, when Mr. Jones is here, get his grumpy butt back in the chair. <laughs> don't let him, don't let him around anybody else. I'm afraid that he'll influence them to, to be the same. So it, it's, it's great. I just saw my good friend, Mark Murphy typed in that he's doing a hundred percent telemedicine consult. So easy. Our consoles, I want to emphasize, have gone from 60 minutes to 30 minutes. And I sent an email out to our team the other day saying, you know, if we were a widget factory right now, uh, you know, our production just went up 
fifty percent on that portion of our of, of our of our production, and our our uh, um, uh, device checks have gone from thirty minutes to fifteen on average. So we're becoming much more efficient, and I believe it's better patient care, not less patient care, because you know, patients want to be treated. They don't want to spend any more time than is necessary to be effectively treated. So to me, the more efficiently we do that, that's the the, the better. Uh, treatment is if it takes three hours to get to the end result or one, the person who does it in one, I believe is a better practitioner in delivering that service. So um, when it comes to device checks, yeah, I mean, if their jaw hurts or their teeth are, are hurt, um, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, we've got to have them come in. But for the most part, what are we doing on device checks? We're doing subjective discussions and we're doing objective evaluations, looking at sleep tests. So uh, let's, you know, let's walk through each of those. I think we got some questions. We'll, we'll get to those. If you don't answer them there, Rich, we'll, we'll come back to them because I think there's some good questions. Do a lot of the self functions. I think I, I personally haven't done any. I think Justin's done a, done, done, uh, done maybe one. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah, it says my internet's unstable. Uh, but the rest of it we're doing daily and I intend, we intend on continuing to do it this way in the future. So briefly, let's talk about what we do during our device checks. I mean, this is kind of an aside of, you know, our system for, for evaluating our patients. We give them the device, they wear it for three, three weeks. And uh, if they have any problems, they're supposed to call us. And what we find is if we do good scans and do quality devices, they usually wear them. They don't have many issues. So the first question is, are you wearing your device? If they say no, well, we'll figure it out. Maybe they would have to come in. But the vast majority of the patients answer to that, yes. I'm wearing this every night because we're doing uh, good devices, good quality labs, taking nice scans. That's the reason I don't like the self-impression kit. And so then we ask them, is it working? And, and if they say, no, it's not, and we'll kind of walk you through how we do that, then we're going to have the patient adjust it more. This is nothing new due to telemedicine, but the patients used to come in for this appointment. Instead of now, why do they need to come in for us just to say, hey, adjust this some more, and let's talk about if it's working again in the future. And then the second part of this is once we feel their symptoms are addressed, we're going to do some evaluations with follow-up sleep testing. All of this part now should be able to be done via phone calls and telemedicine. And we were doing that to some extent. I don't know if I couldn't get the team on board as much as I wanted to with that, or the patients or both. And I think it was both. But now everybody's on board with this. And I tell you, this is the turning into the efficient system that, that I have personally been dreaming about for a while. So let's talk about the subjective evaluation. So now we get the patient on the phone. We talk to them about what their chief complaints are. What's the biggest one? Rich snoring usually or sleepiness? I mean, yes. you know, some patients, some people have none of those, but if, if they do, we're going to go through uh, their symptoms and we do that at the consultation and we know what their symptoms are. And how hopefully much time does this take? Hopefully break? we've asked them and documented that. But you gotta have a you gotta have a placeholder for that. You gotta have a you gotta have something to put that in, or you know, a way to do it. So if you're not using DS3 or a dedicated dental sleep medicine software, then make yourself templates for how to do this and that kind of thing. Because you do want to track this stuff, you know. Because you, I I think guy that makes the virtual part of this it makes it even more important that we document this kind of stuff. It's always been important, but, but now, you know, we, we're, 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 we're having a, you know, we're kind of doing that remotely. So I think it makes it even more important. Absolutely. And so knowing what their subjective and objective goals are, in other words, what their symptoms are and what do we expect to accomplish on a sleep test? And so we have a way of documenting that. And so again, why does a patient need to come in? For us to ask, I don't know if you can see that on your screens, but this is Epworth scores, Thornton scores, snoring levels. You know, we just get them on the telemedicine consult or just even on the phone, and we ask them those questions again. And we add another column, and, you know, they don't have to be in person to go over this. Uh, why would you have to drive across town, park somewhere, sit in a reception room to come out to fill out a questionnaire? It never made sense to me to start with. Certainly doesn't now. So the patients are readily saying this is fine. We'll, we'll talk them three weeks to see how you're doing. Okay, they're, they're not doing as well. Their effort's not where they want it to be or their snoring's not. We give them instructions uh, via the, the phone or the telemedicine consult, however we're doing that. Say, turn your screw so many times and we'll talk to you again in a few weeks. We call them in a few weeks and we ask them the same questions again. Now we can see that they're, 
uh, that, that their Epworth went from uh, you know, 19 down to three, their snoring's improved, their sleep quality's improved. And then a patient knows at this point, hey, your, are your symptoms where you wanna be? They say, yes, they are. We're ready to move on to sleep testing. I understand some patients don't have symptoms. We could, we could talk about this particular process for over an hour or two probably by itself. But with telemedicine, it just took that from the patient coming in to sitting in a chair, to going back to the operatory, taking up an operatory, to a process that takes 15 minutes now as opposed to 30 or more minutes and taking up one of our operatories. And we're doing essentially all these checks this way now and the patients appreciate it and we'll be much more efficient doing it. So uh, I've, I've, I'm just excited not only about the opportunities for us to, to do consults, but to be more efficient at what we're doing as well. We just need a $20 straight handpiece guy to include in the, in the box we send them and <laughs> say, no, not that one, the one over there. No, not that one, that one. Okay, right, right there. <laughs> yeah, but I, and that's true, but I can tell you with using milled <laughs> devices, uh, using scans, uh, we're having less and less adjustments on these things. So I'm not saying we don't have any, because that, that would certainly be not, not be truthful. And so, so now we've done the follow-up, how are you doing subjective evaluations? Uh, 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 and, 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 and now we're gonna do follow-up testing. And this is, man, this is changing as we speak in, in the world. And I can remember, Rich, when we first started doing this, you had to send everybody back to the PSG. And they'd go in there and they'd wake the patient up and they'd turn this thing. You know, and the patient's like, I didn't slept like garbage because they kept coming in and waking me up, making me take that device out. And then you and I think we, we both bought the Rimmer's recorder, right? What was it, $7,000, this big antique thing that we had? And we were so excited. Oh, it's, it's not that big, you guys. <laughs> it's only it's, about like that. They'll attach to the wall, and it would do one night. And so we would have to hand them the device. They'd go, we'd program it, they'd come home, we'd have to manually read this thing. It had some auto scoring, but it wasn't perfect. You know, we'd spend 45 minutes deciding, oh, that's not the best position. Go home, crank or screw some more, and they come in two or three times getting this, this device. And now we have devices that will record two, three, four, ten nights of data or continual. I mean, over-the-counter ones like, like this one here uh, will we'll, we'll record – uh, uh, oximetry and, and heart rate variability uh, uh, indefinitely if the patient has it through Bluetooth technology. And we have little things like chitlets you can put on your finger and we have disposable uh, uh, devices here that we can send our patients home with and monitor. And so now they don't even have to come back in for this testing if you're worried about COVID. And our testing went from, okay, you have a patient with an AHI near 30 here at 29 well, instead of just doing one night, we'll send them home and test them at three positions, four positions, five positions, uh, go from where they are to maximum protrusion. And if you use DS3 software, you can see at a glance, as we have those three nights uh, written out there, how far forward they went each night, uh, all Rich and I get paid for is making a decision. Okay, well, they were HI was near 30 the first night. They're well, near, was it say, a, a six here? and their SPO2 readings look great, maybe we want them to go here. And it's just that simple that we do. And, and this is not necessarily new the way we've been doing it, but what is new is the ability to test multiple nights, uh, the home testing becoming way less expensive and more accessible. And if anybody's concerned about COVID, there's disposable uh, testing units. There's ones they can purchase and keep themselves. If you wanna know more about those exciting things, you can get in touch with us, type consult, we can walking through all your options on that. There are more than we could spend the whole webinar just talking about uh, about that itself. So uh, all these things have added up to way more efficient uh, patients and, and, and treating. And then, uh, well, anything you wanna add on that, Rich, because we're winding down here to the last subject. No, you're doing good so far. Well, I'll let you, you're the expert on talking to uh, physicians and uh, how, how many hours do you spend sitting around in their reception room sometimes? What minutes to come eat the donuts you brought for them or sandwiches you bought for lunch, you know? 
Yeah, uh, same, same, same kind of thing. You know, we, we've talked about how this is making our lives easier and more efficient. We've also touched on how it's making the, it's lowering the barriers for the patients as well. Those are, those are all good things. Well, the other thing this is doing is, you know, I have a full-time marketing person who's supposed, their only job is to get me a lunch and learn every day. That's their job. You just get me a lunch and learn. You order the food, you go get it, you show up, you bring everything. Well, we're getting, you know, probably 80% of these people want me coming to their office right now. So we're, we've, we've switched over to this Zoom platform now, and we send them a couple of sandwiches for the doctors. Now we don't even buy lunch for the staff usually. So it's cheaper for me, you know, at this point. And then we do Zoom. I did one yesterday, Guy, and, you know, about 15 minutes into it, he goes, man, it's pretty easy to tell. You know, you're, you know what you're talking about here. He goes, you know, I'm already sending you a referral. I mean, the guy sent it, he faxed us a referral before I was even done with the Zoom consult. And I didn't know this guy before. So you got to remember that, that physicians don't know who to send their patients to. Sure, there are physicians out there who give people with an AHI of 5.1 a CPAP machine and they beat their patients over the head with it, you know, if they won't wear it. But there are more and more primary care physicians who are stepping in and doing this. You know, as we, we utilize telemedicine more, I'm really interested to see how this changes that part of it, Guy. So, you know, I mentioned before, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to be careful that I don't step on the shoes of, of sleep physicians who make their living through sleep tests. But I think a primary care doc who's already having trouble managing the patient's sleep apnea, their diabetes, their hypertension, their fibromyalgia. I think a normal uh, primary care doc would say, thank you for taking this off my plate. That's how a normal physician would respond to this. You know, they would say, holy cow, I actually get some help. I'm not the one that has to do all of this. So, I'm kind of interested to see how a lot of this plays out. I think as a lot of you are, but, but don't think, don't, don't be so narrow minded to think that this is only a platform for our patients. You know, we, we can start to market through this now too. And, 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 and this is different than a telemarketer. You know, you pay somebody to call these people and do this. No, I'm sending a link to the doctors in the practice three or four of them get on that I see their picture, just like you guys see my picture now. And they're asking questions and they're doing that. And I share my screen that's got about, like you said, guys, six to 10 slides. Hey, this is a dental device. This is what it looks like. This is who we are. This is what we do. So it, again, it's made this entire process. San Antonio is a big city guy. It's 60 miles from one side of the city to the other. You know, well, how that, long that, that lunch and learn took me, you know, three seconds to, to get started yesterday. I didn't have to get in my car and drive or anything. So. Well, it doesn't take you very long on that uh, Tesla anyway, right? So <laughs> you won't get to drive it at maniac mode across the town as much or what, what is that that it goes into? Uh, ludicrous the, mode. Ludicrous mode. It was ludicrous. That scared me to death. I'll never get in the car with you again. But uh, <laughs> no, but you're right. Think about the time. You spend 45 minutes each way to go to that office. You just got an hour and a half of your life back. I, I'm really excited big, about this, too. I, yeah. That 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 guy is a big chunk of my day every day. Yeah. You know, right. I, I think about, man, I can now do a couple more consults or even more, you know, again. Right. Um, so... You, you know, don't keep, keep an open mind about this. I'm sure some of you out there are already figuring out other ways to use these platforms. And we certainly hope that you will share them with us so that we can share them. Wow. Guy and I and Dental Sleep Solutions are all about doing everything that we can to help every dentist out. Yeah. Whether and I your think office what we're right next door to mine or not. What we're doing here, Rich, with you doing that, with us doing this for our patients, we're doing two things. One is we are becoming comfortable with this format. Okay, so, so we're comfortable talking to the doctors, talking to our patients, but then the patients are becoming comfortable with the format. And that's one of the reasons I'm excited about this. It's going to continue on after this because it's going to become what people are more used to. And so as, as we do this, the doctor is going to think, why do I want to spend time 
I can get on the phone with Drake and get on the Zoom format with Drake and, and do this. I really am confident this is going to stick around afterwards. And it is a huge silver lining in this terrible thing we're going through right now. For dental sleep, I think it's going to, the efficiencies are just all the opportunities or everything we've talked about and ones we haven't even talked about or maybe even thought about yet. So uh, great sharing that part with us. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're excited uh, about this aspect of it. The future is now. Um, we've been, we've, we, we, uh, we started out talking about looking at these telemedicine platforms four or five years ago. I was excited as could be when I started thinking, oh, we can actually do it this way. And then all the barriers came in. And now the payers are there, the patients are on board, everybody's learning this. It's going to be the new way going now for sure. And I think going forward, Everyone I talk to that's involved in this feels that this will be the new normal even once this uh, this uh, pandemic passes. So get on it now, get comfortable with it now. Your efficiencies for your office, the ability to get tested, the ability to do your consultations, uh, the uh, face-to-face -face of the physicians, it's just really an opportunity that we haven't seen in dental sleep medicine. Uh, to this magnitude ever, and that's why we're so excited about it. So I know we got a few other questions to answer. Just uh, back to the housekeeping again for a moment. Again, here's the date on the on the self billing. If you want to learn how to do billing yourself, uh, Lisa uh, gets rave reviews on this. It, uh, it it's on August uh, 18th at eight o'clock. We're going to talk for an hour about you know what you need to do set up if you want to do this yourself. Uh, I'm going to moderate, but Lisa's going to do most of the talking on that. You may join in. I don't know if you're going to be on or not. You're welcome, but uh, we're just going to try to stay out of Lisa's way and let her know what, what you need to, to do that. So it's the same. It's free webinar. Uh, make sure you sign up for that. And then if you want to know more about billing, this is a four-hour course on Friday, August 14th from 11 to 3, $249. If you just type in early bird in the question and answer uh, or the chat, or if you want to write that code down and go register uh, uh, for that before um, – before the Saturday, I think it's the deadline for that. You get the $100 off. That course is included and you also get recordings. By the way, this webinar is being recorded. You can pull it up on YouTube in a, in a few days uh, once we get it loaded. But now these uh, courses, these virtual courses and that billing are only visible to the people who attend and you get to uh, watch that recording for uh, I think a month and you and your team can go back and watch it. And I can tell you, if you wanna learn how to do dental sleep, this three night, two hour a night, seven to nine Eastern, August 11th through 13th is the best deal going for everyone. Back to being efficient, uh, you spend a couple hours a night, you don't have to fly, you don't have to travel, 495 is a fee, uh, but if you do it before Friday or type in early bird, you get, get it for 295 and you get a starter kit with brochures, patient information, a, a MyTap model that we're gonna talk to you about making uh, on one of your patients yourself, EMA uh, device and lots of other stuff. So here's how you get in touch with us. I know there were some questions that came in. If we didn't answer them, just contact us or type in consult tonight and someone will get in touch with you. If you want to know specific companies we're working with as well, we can, uh, we can, we can do that as, as well. Oh, I didn't know I went to that. That was some information in case we needed it. So there's, uh, there's how you get a hold of us. Look at that, Rich. We're, we're all finished on time for a change. Uh, usually we're kind of struggling awesome. to do hey, that. I've seen, I see you've answered a lot of questions. A, Go ahead. Yeah, we, we did. We didn't have a whole lot of questions. I got a question for Justin out there who's doing a lot of this. And I know uh, Rashmi Parmar is out there too doing, and he's doing a whole lot of this. Uh, Mark Murphy, I know you are too. What My question is, what percentage of your patients that you set up to do this uh, telemedicine console, uh, regardless of what platform you're, you're, you're using, have problems with it. You know, they can't open it or they don't have a camera or they can't get their microphone to work or something like that. Uh, Justin, you're, you're on. What would you say that is in a typical week? Well, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely not 100%. I can tell you that much. Um, and, and it does go up and down a bit. You know, I got frustrated. Um, you know, we started doing this six weeks ago and it, it went great. You know, the, I remember the first patient we had um, for that actually had denture. So uh, console is only about 10 minutes. We got them, got them through. But, uh, you know, last, two, I think two weeks ago was like 50%. But I'd say on average, probably 20% um, of the time. But, 
you know, that, that time I still pick up the phone, you know, they're on my schedule. So I'm going to pick up the phone and give them a call and, and hopefully they answer and, you know, let them know, Hey, we got you on the schedule. Uh, you know, are you having any problems? Can I help walk you through that? Um, and uh, kind of go from there. And if, if they want to do it over the phone, if, if I have them on the phone, I try not to let them hang up and I say, well, you know, let's just do this now and, and get done what we can or what questions you have. Yeah, I, I think that that's a good point, Justin, you know, make it, you know, make it a positive. It's like the guy that shows up for the consult who's already, he's, he's mean and nasty when he wakes up guy, like you said, and he's got to fight traffic and everything by the time he gets there. I, I want my patients in a good mood. I want them to feel good about themselves and life in general when we sit down to talk about sleep medicine. So I, I like the idea of, you know, kind of Hey, let's just not mess with that. Let me just call you on the phone and we'll talk. You know, we'll, we'll get that. So you, you, you kind of, you know, take what they give you. Uh, I know that uh, Mark Murphy said, you know, maybe 10% or something there, you know, we have trouble. So this, this isn't a given, you know, it's not working every single time. So, you know, as you, you guys start adopting this, uh, remember that, but you know, be patient and and like Justin said, don't hesitate to just move over to a phone call and, and do it over the phone. Yeah, they can't see our slides and they can't, you know, we can't show them a picture of a dental device and things like that. But but there may be other ways that we we can do that. It might give us another opportunity to send them an email that has pictures of, you know, or something like that, or to, or to do a follow up. Yeah, it's, it's just a, another point of contact. Even if we have to reschedule, it's, it's one more interaction we get with the patient and, you know, they appreciate your effort to get a hold of them. Yeah, one, one question on a different note that came up was how we do the bite uh, on a home kit. Uh, some suggestions there. I don't know what you typed in as the answer, Rich. I think you answered it. Would be you do something like a tap, three. Is that what you did? Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter so much because you I just have bite. a bite and some cotton bite. rolls. We don't need no yeah. stinking bite, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we usually do. Uh, or an, right. EMA, we, an EMA, an EMA device. You yeah. EMA, yeah. you don't. So you could just, you just have them bite into a cotton roll or the end of their toothbrush or something uh, if, if you had material there. But I, I think you can, uh, for certain devices, you could just hand articulate it with a tap uh, and you'd be able to, to manufacture that. You would not want to do one like a dorsal, something that's hitting on both sides in the back without an adequate bite, you're going to cause yourself a big headache, but depending on which device you're uh, doing, if you did a dorsal, then maybe have an anterior deprogrammer and then it won't, uh, it, it, it'd be more likely to fit. So good questions. I, I mean, to be clear, uh, we are not in favor of doing uh, until we can find a better way of doing it, doing the take home kit unless absolutely necessary. That's not our norm by any, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's, there, there, there may be times that we do do it that way. The deliveries I'd be more a little bit in favor of when, when needed. Yeah, we can, you know, with the virtual consultation, if you know you're headed in that direction of virtual impression, virtual delivery, um, using the virtual consultation to, you know, look at their midlines, have them bite down on their teeth, you know, they're going to need to send you more pictures. So there's going to be some work on their end, but um, you can definitely do it with uh, some devices are better than others for sure. Yeah, one, one thing I, I think I, I meant to mention, we had the pictures up there of Justin doing those consultations. One of them shows getting a screen capture of the guy's got a, like a driver's license up there. They can hold something up to the screen. You, you know, you can see how, you know, it takes a, they hold it up to the screen. And then with the software we're using, you can get a screen capture. And so you can get, you know, if they have some documentation you need, their insurance card, what have you, that's a good way to get it. And then also, if you want them to do pictures, then you can go up there and then you can take screen captures of their bite uh, to use later as well. So uh, that's one of the reasons we selected the, the software we're, uh, we were using, so. Hey, Justin, have you got anybody yet going? Do you think that's a cavity right there? Oh, you, you'd be surprised at some of the questions <laughs> I get asked, Rich. Uh, you know, I, I had another question there, and I'm trying to remember what it was, um, or, or a comment. Guy, you know, we're, we're doing uh, some of our, we call them curbside deliveries now, you know? So the patient doesn't want to come in for the device. Medicare has relaxed. I learned that from Lisa uh, recently on one of our online study clubs. We can now mail our devices to the Medicare patients, and that counts. You know, we can get a proof of delivery. 
through snail mail. We can do a, a DocuSign. There's a couple of different ways to do that. But what came up was, how do we make them an AM aligner? So what we're doing now is we're making the AM aligner when we do the scans. You know, so we get them in and we make the aligner. We used to make it when we delivered the device. Now we're making the AM aligner the day that we do the scans and take the bite. So um, again, I, I don't know how this is gonna work guys with the, with the virtual impressions and the bites and all this other stuff. There's a lot of things to work out here. It's not a perfect system yet, but like Guy said, it's not going away. You know, there, a lot of this is going to stay and we need to take it and make our practices more efficient. We need to use it to lower the barriers for ourselves as well as our patients. And, and, and uh, like Justin said, get comfortable with, with this platform and what we do because it's, it's here to stay. Absolutely. And again, here's the course date, uh, August 11th through 13th. Uh, and if even if the 295 early bird's not good enough, if you want to attend this for free, uh, my good friend Mark Murphy's on here and uh, mentioned that this just uh, little literally hot off the presses that the ProSomnus will sponsor you uh, under certain criteria and uh, and they will even pay your tuition. So if you want to know more about that, contact us and we can put you uh, in touch with them so that uh, you know our all goal both ProSomnus and Dental Sleep Solutions is to get people uh, educated, get dentist offices educated, and get more dental offices screening, testing, treating their patients. And that's any way we can do that, we're, we're happy to do it. So there's the dates on the course again. So uh, if you know, uh, you uh, have Mark, more Mark questions Murphy, about that. Me... Mark just mentioned too that Prosomnus has a digitally manufactured aligner. Um, I don't think I even knew that guy. So that's good to know. Yes. You know, yeah, it, it won't be long before I really won't need to go into my office, it sounds like, guy. <laughs> That's what we're working on, man. That's what we're working on. I sit here in front of this computer and my uh, screen and, uh, yeah. So, now, if we can just figure out how to get a really good connection out there while we're bass fishing, and then we've got the green go. screen, you know, the hook, hook, to, the, hook to, the, to the chair on your bass boat so that they don't there know that we're out we there go. fishing with them with the rod down. So... <laughs> Uh, well, thank you everybody for staying on. I know everybody stayed a little late. Uh, we are, uh, we're, we're happy to answer any more questions. You'll get your CE. Remember to tune into the next webinar. And just, if you need a resource for dental sleep, we're not pushy salespeople. We are here to help you. Just call us. We'll answer your questions. Type in consult. And we'll set up a time. If it's about this or about other dental sleep things, that's all we do. We're happy to to help you with it. And I can give you my personal promise. If you come to one of these virtual courses, whether you've just started doing this uh, and you really want to learn the right way from the get-go, we'll go through all the steps of how to do this successfully in your practice. But even if you've been doing this a long time, uh, those are some of the times that people go, gosh, I wish I'd come to this course earlier because you'll learn how to do it efficiently. What I mean, doing it, going from screening, testing, treating, and billing. We go through each of those systems.